Okay, question eight. Um, dy dx equals negative x cubed plus 4x minus 5 over 2x cubed, where x is not equal to 0. Given that, y equals 7 at x equal to 1, find y in terms of x, giving each term in its simplest form. Okay, so we've got the gradient function, and we're asked to work out the uh, original function. So we're going to have to integrate. So I need to integrate negative x cubed plus 4x minus 5 over 2x cubed. I'm going to integrate that with respect to x. Okay, now it's quite difficult to integrate this as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this expression in here using the laws of indices. So it's going to be still negative x cubed. That's fine. It's going to be plus, splitting this, 4x over 2x cubed minus 5 over 2x cubed. Close off the brackets and that's with respect to x. And again, that's the integral, negative x cubed. And let's see if we can simplify these terms here. 2 goes into the 4 twice, and x divided by x cubed is x to the power of negative 2. I'm going to leave that as negative 5 over 2, and then um, x to the power of 3 underneath the line. I can bring it up above and write it as x to the power of negative 3. So I'm using the laws of indices to rewrite that. So I'm integrating this expression now with respect to x. Okay, so that's going to equal. I'm going to increase the power by 1. That's going to make it a 4. And I need to multiply by 1 over 4. So we get negative 1 over 4 x to the power of 4. Increasing this power by 1. So it's going to become a negative 1. I need to multiply by 1 over negative 1. So you get 2 times 1 over negative 1. It's going to give me negative 2. Again, increasing the power by 1. We're going to get x to the power of negative 2. I need to multiply by 1 over negative 2. So I've got 5 over 2. I've got negative 5 over 2 multiplied by negative 1 over 2. And when we do that, we're going to get 5 over 4. And it's going to be positive because we've got two negatives multiplied together. So it's plus 5 over 4. If I wanted to check whether I've done this correctly, we could we could just find a derivative. And if we find a derivative, well, maybe lost connection there. Here we go, we're back. Um, once we find a derivative of this, it should equal this. Now I must remember to add my constant c. So we've integrated the function correctly there. So I know if I substitute 1 into this function here, I must get an answer of 7. So this must be equal to 7 when x is equal to 1. So it must equal 7 when x equals 1. In fact, I can write it like so. So this is going to be y equals all of this. So it must equal 7 when x equals 1. So we get negative 1 over 4 times 1 to the power of 4 minus 2 times 1 to the power of negative 1 plus 5 over 4 times 1 to the power of negative 2 plus the c. Now what we need to do is tidy this up so we get 7 equals. Well, 1 to the power of 4 is 1, so we get negative 1 quarter. This is going to be 1 multiplied by negative 2 is also negative 2. And then 1 to the power of negative 2 is also 1. So I'm still just going to add 5 over 4 plus that c. So we get 7 equals negative 1 quarter 
plus 5 over 4 is going to be 4 over 4, which is 1. So negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. I need to add that C, which means that C equals, adding 1 to both sides, we get 8. So C must equal 8. Let's go back to the uh, blue line here. So I'm going to substitute C equals 8 in here. And we're going to get this. So we get y equals negative 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 minus 2 x to the negative 1 plus 5 over 4 x to the negative 2. And c is now 8, so plus that 8. It said give each it said give each term in its simplest form. So let's get rid of these negative powers y is going to equal negative 1 quarter x to the power of 4 minus 2 over x plus 5 over 4x squared plus 8.